Hello, my name is Joseph Sharon, and I'm going to speak to you about the uh, five great kilns from the Song Dynasty. Uh, now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you some examples that Sotheby's sold, and show you some examples from my collection, and uh, let you see the difference that the auction houses are not selling the best pieces at auction. They discriminate against collectors uh, often, and uh, they. Uh, well, let me let me just show you some, some examples, and then we'll talk further. This is a, a Junware piece, and uh, this piece was done uh, was sold at Sotheby's uh, in uh, New York. It's three and three quarter inches. 316 2016 for eighty one thousand dollars. Now I'm going to show you a few pieces from my collection, Jungware pieces from my collection, done during the Northern Sung Dynasty. And these are very finely formed, very beautiful pieces. And uh, uh, how they did these pieces from the from the uh, Jung kilns. Generally, the finest pieces they they put a uh, brown uh, slip uh, on it first, then they glazed the, the blue and fired it, and uh, brushed on the purple, and uh, then fired it again. And you can see the foot rings are done very neatly, very nice. And these are the better wares that the Jun Kiln produced. They produced some very fine wares, and there's a reason why they uh, are so well known. Not because they produce little bowls like this. Uh, they were capable of producing some very fine wares, and the best artisans generally worked on the best pieces. And that's a uh, the Jung kiln from the Northern Sung Dynasty. Now I'm going to show you I'm going to show you a piece. The Ding Kiln. This is a, 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 a bowl that sold 9 16 2014 at Sotheby's for $81,000. It's a persimian glaze, a Dingware persimian glaze bowl. I'll show you two examples of what the Dingware was capable of doing. And uh, these two pieces from the uh, Song Dynasty Dingware. And uh, with the persimian glaze. Now you can see the difference in the glazes. These are beautiful glaze. This has problems all through the whole, whole piece. It's not a fine piece of, uh, and it's not a fine example uh, of what they were capable of doing. And uh, these pieces are beautiful. They have it, the glaze has like a metallic feel to it and uh, what they did they they wiped the glaze on the on the uh, base here a little thin layer of glaze and uh, you can see the white biscuit that they used if you uh, shoot a flashlight down down the uh, down the inside the piece the insides are unglazed and the outside all thing where was glazed on the outside only and uh, these are just magnificent pieces from the uh, Ding Kiln and you can see the difference clearly see the difference of what what they were capable of doing compared to what Sotheby's is selling now 
and I'm going to go to uh, the ding wear, the white wares from the ding kiln. And they sold this piece, it's thought to be sold this in Hong Kong, it was a dealer's piece. It has a, uh, a copper band around it that was cleaned. It doesn't show any corrosion on it, at least you can't see it in, on the uh, photographs. And uh, it sold for approximately $18 million on 4 8 2014. And it was a dealer's piece, a crony dealer's piece. And uh, it's a nice piece, but I'm going to show you two examples from my collection, Dingware. And these have uh, fire gilted bands around the rim and uh, uh, rims and bases and these fire gilted bands weren't clean they have the corrosion uh, uh, they have uh, cuprate and malachite uh, the cuprate appears first and then the malachite grows on top of the cuprate and this cannot be reproduced in any way it, 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 it can't be faked uh, it, it only happens in nature and this is what it would look like uh, a piece would look sometimes look, well this would be this is a piece I photographed uh, with the cuprate and malachite and uh, it shows the reddish and the green growing on top of the red and that's how it occurs in nature. It can't happen the other way around. It has to be the cuprate appears first and the malachite grows on top of the cuprate. And that can't uh, uh, be reproduced from the book, uh, Copper and Bronze in Art by David Scott. The existence of malachite formation over a layer of cuprate is supported by analytical and metal metallographic studies is a good indication of the authenticity of the artifact. They're telling you it's authentic ancient piece because they tried to duplicate that and they couldn't even come close. And uh, that's uh, the thing where uh, uh, the bands and the thing where it was covered with an, an ivory, like an ivory colored uh, 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 glaze and it's very smooth glaze and it has tear streaks in the glaze. This is another indication that it was done in a ding kiln. It has some tear streaks in the glaze and uh, it's, it's uh, just a, a beautiful piece. You can see they used a, a white, a white uh, um, biscuit and the same with this piece is marked and this has two two characters on there. One is one is a tribute, and I can't read the second character. I don't know what that says because I don't read Chinese, but uh, I know the one character is tribute. And these are two magnificent pieces, well balanced forms. This has applied flowers uh, and, and uh, ropes, and uh, and it's just a magnificent piece with applied decorations. This has incised decorations, and it's and it's very well done. And uh, you can put this piece up against these two, and see that I believe the vases are far superior because they generally bring more money. And that's the dingware piece. And I'm going to go to the gunware. Here's a, a gunware uh, uh, bowl that sold uh, Sotheby's in Hong Kong, 10 7 2015, for $1,249,000, approximately $49,000. It's only three inches, it's a little cup. And uh, here's a piece from my collection a mallet formed uh, vase. And this this is a beautiful, beautifully done, very well balanced form, and just glazed beautifully. And uh, 
uh, you can see they they're very similar and this has a little gold thread in the glaze and so does this piece it has a little gold thread in there in, in certain areas of, of uh, uh, the crackle and just the it, it has a uh, dark colored uh, clay they used on all the gun wares and you can see that on a base and uh, it's it's a beautiful magnificent uh, little vase and you can compare the two and this brought a million two hundred forty nine thousand dollars plus whatever and uh, you can see the difference I'm going to show you another gunware piece that sucked to be sold in Hong Kong 4 7 2015 for approximately 14 million dollars now this piece is really flawed it has uh, holes in the glaze it ha it's it's kind of like flopping on the one side over here and uh, it, the uh, the rim is a little bit cockeyed and it's just not a, a great form piece and it, it, here's a piece from my collection this is a uh, beautiful gun vase was done by a master potter and uh, this piece is they glaze these both of these pieces several times and the, the actual body of the piece is thin thinner than the glaze that they covered it with it's glazed inside and out and uh, it's a magnificent piece in well balanced form and you can see the glaze pooling on the on the base here and uh, I turn it up up here and you can see the thickness of the the how thick the body is compared to the glaze the glaze is very thick on the base here and uh, it has the gun official gun mark on it and it's a fabulous piece this piece doesn't have a mark it doesn't have an official mark on it and uh, this is a very well done piece and I'm going to show you a couple other examples of gunware and these pieces here are pieces that apparently the collector that had these had them in, enhanced uh, or uh, uh, he, he enhanced them with overlays and uh, this was done during the Qing Dynasty apparently uh, they uh, overlaid these metal overlays and I'm not sure what type of metal it is but they have uh, they're like little works of art in themselves but look at the pieces the pieces are very well balanced forms they're they're from the gun kiln they have the official mark you can see the the dark colored biscuit and an imperial mark and this is the same you can see the mark and the dark colored biscuit it's a very well balanced just a beautiful piece and the same with this piece here it has the official mark on it and apparently this collector loved these pieces so much he em embellished them with with these uh, like jewelry hanging on them and that's the gun piece pieces this is what Sotheby's does they, they, uh, they don't sell the best pieces at their auctions they act like the uh, the uh, from when you see their auctions you, you think the the Song Dynasty they didn't produce very good pieces and uh, they, they produce some of the finest wares in, uh, ever produced and uh, here's a G-Ware piece now this is a very 
poorly done piece, G wear piece. They they produce some great wares, and uh, this sold in uh, New York, 9/15/2010 for it's eight and a half inches tall for a million seven hundred and sixty two thousand uh, approximately dollars and uh, that's a piece of stuff to be sold I'll show you an example of a, a fine G wear piece this is a well balanced form compared to this this is about 13 over 13 inches and uh, uh, it has the iron wire and the uh, golden thread has the purple mouth and uh, where it thins it shows like a little purple cast to it and uh, on the base it shows the iron foot you can see the foot of the piece they use the same clay as uh, the gunware pieces uh, they, they believe they came they, they use the same exact clay and uh, you can see the difference in the quality of, of the workmanship and everything. This is done by, I don't know who, but uh, not a great piece. I'm going to show you another example here of G-Wear. This is a beautiful example, uh, a masterpiece of G-Wear. And this was done with, uh, with a, uh, it's called the Eel's Blood crackle and uh, it has instead of the uh, golden thread it has a, a red thread throughout the piece it's iron wire with a red thread and uh, this is a, these are rare pieces and this piece even has loose handles it's very well potted we're very well balanced it's a, just a great piece and uh, this is from the G kiln during the Sung Dynasty and you can see the base the iron foot on the base and it's a fabulous piece I'm going to show you one more from the G kiln and this is the same form as this now you can see what they were capable of producing these, this piece here is, is uh, just a very poor example uh, of uh, G-Wear. They were capable of doing great things in, during the Song Dynasty. They did great pieces. And uh, pieces like this, uh, people don't understand what they were, they were uh, capable of producing. And uh, this has got the purple mouth, the purple where it thins out it has a purple cast to it and uh, the, the iron foot and the iron wire with the golden thread throughout the piece it's a fabulous piece and that's the jeweler now I'm going to go to the last wares the rue wear now, most collectors know this piece sold in Hong Kong, sought to be sold this piece for $27 million. It's a flawed piece. It has, uh, uh, you can see it has uh, uh, holes in the glaze. It has flaws on the, on the edge here, firing flaws. It's just not a good piece. They they sold these pieces to the population. They took them out and sold them to the population at a much cheaper price. And uh, I'll show you. This piece is a merchant wear piece. And this would have been sold to the wealthy merchants. It doesn't have the flaws that this has. And uh, um, this would have been sold to the population and they were pretty expensive back then uh, and here is a tribute piece now this is a finer the, the this is the, the the worst pieces they 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 produced this is the 
the next step up, and this is the finest pieces they produce, the, the uh, tribute wares. And uh, this piece here uh, has the fire gilted bands and the cuprite and malachite. And on the base shows the uh, sesame seed size and shape sperm marks and the uh, it's marked here uh, Fen uh, Wang which means uh, tribute to the ruler and that's the emperor is the ruler so it was a tribute to the ruler and uh, these are tribute wares and all the ones with the the, the fire gilted bands or tribute wares and that goes with most of the kilns that that put fire gilted bands on them they were given as tribute because they're the better pieces and uh, uh, this piece here is a merchant wear piece and this piece was sold to the population none of these pieces have crushed agate stone in a glaze no uh, that's something be said the, the there's only uh, 70 in the world. There's more than 70 in the world, believe me. And uh, and they said they had crushed agate. There's no crushed agate in this piece. I can tell you that. And uh, I'm going to show you the imperial pieces now. Uh, the Emperor Huzan commissioned a root kiln to produce wares exclusively for him and his court. And he wanted... He was receiving all these opulent wares, and he wanted to wares that were very, very refined, modest wares. He wanted to go back in time to produce wares that were very modest and simplistic. And uh, uh, he, he he helped develop these wares, and most of the forms in, uh, of these wares were never seen before, and they're not, they don't even know the forms today. Uh, many of the forms and these pieces uh, they don't they're not uh, uh, glazed on the foot because they were fire flat in the kiln and they uh, turn brown after firing and it had a gray color clay and they turn brown after firing and these pieces have agate in the glaze and this one piece here has a little clump of agate, or uh, a clump of uh, glaze that was stuck to the f uh, from the floor of the kiln. And uh, inside that, there's you can see agate uh, chips. And here's a picture of it blown up 200 times. And you can see the little chips of agate and here's another picture of it blown up about 500 times and you can see the blue agate in there and that that came from the uh, the glaze and if you take a loop and look at any of these pieces and look at them very closely you'll see glints of light that shoot off where the flakes are that that proves that they did put agate in these pieces these are the pieces that the emperor. This has all been written about in books about the celadine glaze being very uh, uh, quite similar to the the Koryo pieces from the uh, Korean pieces, but these are much much simpler, much mod more modest, and that's what he wanted for his court. And if a piece had flaws. They kept that in the court. They didn't. They didn't uh, uh, do anything. They stayed in the court. He looked at each piece having its own character, and just like human beings. Everyone was an individual, and he saw beauty in every piece. And this is why uh, he kept all the flawed pieces as well, because humans have a lot of flaws. And uh, they're just exquisite pieces that were done for the first pieces ever done for the uh, emperor and his court in Chinese history. 
And uh, I hope th 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 the reason these pieces are coming out of China because the Chinese cannot uh, go to the auctions. You have to be part of the party. And the many, many, uh, most of the Chinese people, uh, they have their own, own collections they pass down through generation after generation. These collections got passed down and uh, these pieces, uh, these particular pieces here, I believe they were from Emperor Huzan uh, from his collection. And uh, uh, he was a, a, a uh, he had a massed, mass amount of art during his reign, and uh, he ended up dying in captivity by the Jin armies. Uh, but these pieces have the have the agate stone, the celadon. They're not. Uh, they also have marks. This is a tribute, a tribute to Wa. It's a uh, Fen Hua. It means a tribute to China, not a tribute to the emperor or anything. Tribute to China, and these pieces were the pieces that the emperor commissioned the Rue Kiln to produce for him and his court. And uh, uh, I think that does it. Uh, I'd like to thank you, and you can go to my website, ChineseMasterPieces.com, and thank you for watching. And I hope it, it's helpful.